Journeying to the past or the future at the push of a button may sound like science fiction, but already there are theories about how to do it. You could access the most extreme parts of nature. Or maybe you could find a way around nature's current restrictions. And the biggest hurdle of all? Determining the nature of time itself. The past, present, and future are all equally real. So the dinosaurs are all out there somewhere in the past doing dinosaur stuff. We're all here now. And all of the future is all out there somewhere in space time too. Basically, in quantum physics, nothing is impossible. So it might be that breaking the fourth dimension is simply a matter of time. The dream of time travel can only become a reality if scientists are able to solve one final mystery. And that is the nature of time itself. It's what Christy Miller spends her days thinking about. Christy is a philosopher who works at the University of Sydney's Centre for Time. At the Centre for Time, we're particularly interested in, given that what physics often tells us about time seems very different to the way you and I, in fact, live our lives in time and experience time. What we really want to do is come up with an account that makes sense of our lived experience in light of what physicists tell us time is really like. Philosophers and physicists long debated what time actually is, but astonishingly, the generally accepted view is that the universe is an unchanging block of space-time. Roughly, the idea is that we call it a block because it has the three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension. And most notably, what's important about the model is the idea that the past, present and future are all equally real. So you can think of everything that ever did exist, does exist or will exist as all somehow being out there in space-time. So the dinosaurs are all out there somewhere in the past doing dinosaur stuff. We're all here now. And all of the future is all out there somewhere in space-time too. One way of thinking about this model is that other places in time are just like other places in space. So just as we are here in Sydney, but there's other people located in Singapore and London, and those places are perfectly real, it's just that we aren't at them. From a time-traveling perspective, it's great news. If the block universe is an accurate description of how things are, then there's nothing to stop us swapping where we are now for somewhere and some when else. And that's when the fun really starts. Suppose backward time travel were possible, and I send you backwards in time, and your mission is to murder your infant grandfather. So now it looks like we have a paradox, because if you're going to be there in the past killing your infant grandfather, you must exist. But equally, once you succeed in killing him, it looks like you are wiped from existence. In fact, you never came to be born, and so you don't exist. But now we have a, what's a contradiction? So you both exist and don't exist, and nobody can both exist and not exist. We already know that your grandfather survives because we know he grows up and marries your grandmother and then has your father and so on. And what's more, you know, you were at his 90th birthday party last week. So when somebody travels back in time, it looks like there's a whole bunch of things that they simply can't succeed in doing because the past is a certain way. And whichever way it is, is the way it's always going to have been. And so you're not free to kill infant Hitler. Well, in fact, there's lots of stuff you seem like you're not free to do. But you might think the future is somehow not like that. The future is like a, a, it's a book, but it's got all blank pages and you can write in what's going to be the case. And so you can kind of write in how the rest of time goes. But according to the block universe model, all of the book is written. The book is written from the very, you know, first moment of the Big Bang all the way through to the very last moment of the universe, if there is one. So the entire book is written, not just the past. And so you ought to really think that there's something perplexing about free will thinking into the future. And in fact, I think that that's the right way of thinking about things. I think what's different about the past and the future is just how much you know about it. Einstein himself famously wrote that the distinction between past, present and future is a stubbornly persistent illusion. And as odd as it sounds, that's still the party line in physics today. And while the block universe emerges directly from Einstein's equations, it might be that there are subtle flaws in that logic. 
that Einstein may have been wrong. The Perimeter Institute in Waterloo, Canada is where the world's physicists go to escape the tedium of conventional thought. You mean that the sum of the zero mode is degenerate? Absolutely nothing is off limits. Here, they're rethinking pretty much everything, including time itself. So what is time? <laughs> Uh, so time is... Um, that's, a, that, that's an excellent question. Most physicists answered this by claiming that time is an illusion, a way we explain reality to ourselves. That's an interesting discussion right there. But one of them, Lee Smolin, has taken the controversial view that when it comes to time, that approach is wrong, that time is real. The activity of time is the continual construction of the future from the present. Time is fundamental. It's absolutely the most essential, most fundamental part of our experience of the world. We experience time as the instant flowing to the next instance because that's the way nature is. I don't think we're anywhere near explaining why we perceive the universe as flowing through time. Um, it's a very, very deep question. The biggest criticism I would make is I don't see any equations. It's, it's words so far. So we, we could ask, is there a kind of mathematics that is really suited to change and growth and time in the way that Euclidean geometry is suited to a static kind of set of relationships? That mathematics doesn't exist as far as I'm aware. <laughs> It's, co it's coming, yes. It's, co it's coming, it's and when it comes, it will become. <laughs> exactly. So what does all of this speculating mean for time travel? Well, the easiest, the, the first simple thing to say is that time travel is probably impossible. If what's real is the present moment and the past is no longer real and is only real in the sense that there are memories or records of it in the present, and if the future has yet to exist and there's no fact of the matter about the future, there's nowhere to go in time travel. If Professor Smolin is right, and that the passage of time is a fundamental phenomenon, all bets are off. If, however, time is not real and emerges as an illusion thanks to a block of space-time, things start to look a lot brighter for would-be time travelers. I think it's clear to me that there is some probability of us going backwards in time. It doesn't seem to me likely that it's impossible. Basically, in quantum physics, nothing is impossible. Uh, particles travel through walls. I mean, there's quantum tunneling, which is classically impossible. Likewise, I think that even though classically you cannot go backwards in time. And there is this notion of causality that A came before B. Quantum mechanically, I doubt that it's fundamental. So, uh, so that gives me great hope because if, it, if something's not fundamental, we probably could exploit it. We probably could break the rule if we figured out exactly the right way to do it. But it's a very, very distant thing. So one should never say never. Um, because some clever person will come along and show you how to, how to break the rule. Imagine for one fleeting moment that you have constructed the world's first time machine. That you have turned theoretical science into practical reality. You might have learned how to manipulate entangled particles or perhaps discovered how to construct and control wormholes. Today, these ideas are tantalizingly out of reach, but every day we learn more and they draw closer. <laughs>